Hello friends. Welcome to study time. Today current affairs for competitive exams 2021. Mod notifies second positive indigenization list. Rajnath Singh has approved a proposal of the Dep of Military Affairs to notify the second positive indigenization list of 108 items. It will help in fulfilling twin objectives of achieving self-reliance and promoting defense exports. The second list lays special focus on weapons systems which are currently under development trials and are likely to translate into firm orders in the future. World Milk Day, the 1st of June. World Milk Day is celebrated every year on the 1st of June. The theme of World Milk Day 2021 is sustainability in the dairy sector with messages on nutrition. The day was established by the Food and Agriculture Organization to appreciate dairy farmers and the dairy sector and recognize the importance of milk as a global food. India is one of the largest producers of milk in the world. AP to set up 30 skill development colleges. The Gov of Andhra Pradesh has passed an order and accorded administrative sanction to State Skill Development Corporation for the establishment of one skill development university and 30 skill development colleges across the state. One college will be set up in each of the 25 parliamentary constituencies. One each will be set up in IIITs across the state and one will be set up in Pulivendala. Goa CM launches electrification program. Goa Chief Minister Pramod Sawant launched a solar-based electrification program for rural households in the state on the 30th of May 2021. This project will bring electricity through renewable energy to areas in Goa where grid connectivity is not feasible. This project is Convergence Energy Services Limited's first off-grid electricity engagement. B. Shyam, Ambassador to Republic of Iceland. B. Shyam, presently the Consul General of India, Osaka Kobe, Japan, has been appointed as India's next ambassador to the Republic of Iceland. Balasubramaniam Shyam joined the Indian Foreign Service in 2000. Shyam's first posting was in Cairo, Egypt as third secretary, language trainee, studying Arabic at the American University Cairo. RBI announces FPI investment limits. The Reserve Bank of India has informed that the limits for foreign portfolio investors FPI investment during the current fiscal in government securities GSEX and state development loans SDLs will remain unchanged at 6% and 2% respectively. The allocation of incremental changes in the GSEX limit in absolute terms over the two subcategories will be retained at 50 50. IBM to offer courses on quantum computing. IIT Madras has announced a collaboration with IBM on quantum computing education and research. This collaboration will provide IIT Madras faculty, researchers and students with access to IBM's quantum systems and tools over IBM Cloud to accelerate joint research in quantum computing. Quantum computing offers the opportunity to solve computationally intractable problems. Sanjeet wins gold at Asian Boxing Seas Hips. India boxer Sanjeet Kumar has won a gold medal in the 91 kg weight category at the ASBC Asian Boxing Championships. Sanjeet defeated five-time Asian Championships medalist and Rio Olympic silver medalist Vasily Levit of Kazakhstan in the final. The 27-year-old Assam boxer has previously won gold in 2013, silver in 2017 and two bronze in 2015 and 2019. Country's first NFT marketplace launched. India's largest crypto exchange Wazerx announced the country's first NFT marketplace on the 31st of May 2021. The platform, which will be used to trade non-fungible tokens NFTs, is run on the Binance Smart Chain, a blockchain platform created by Binance. Binance is one of the largest crypto exchanges in the world, which acquired Wazerx back in 2019. Go waves registration certificate issuance. The Union Gov plans to exempt battery operated vehicles from paying fees for the issuance and renewal of registration certificates RC. This comes against the backdrop of India, its commitment to reducing its carbon footprint by a third by 2030 from 2005 levels. India has already approved a 18100 crore rupees production linked incentive PLI scheme for building Tesla style giga factories. Mahesh Jethmalani nominated to Rajya Sabha. Noted lawyer Mahesh Jethmalani has been nominated to Rajya Sabha. His father Ram Jethmalani, a renowned lawyer who fought several high-profile cases, was also a Rajya Sabha member. 
Mahesh Jethmalani's nomination came days after two seats in the nominated category became vacant. Swapan Dasgupta resigned from the upper house in March 2021. Maratha community to get 10% EWS quota. The Maharashtra government has informed that the Maratha community can avail of benefits under the 10% EWS economically weaker sections quota in government jobs and education. On May 5, 2021, the Supreme Court struck down the Maharashtra state government's decision to grant reservation to the Maratha community in state education and jobs, exceeding the 50% limit. WhatsApp names grievance officer. WhatsApp has finally announced its grievance officer for India. It has named Parash B. Lal as its grievance officer for the country. Now users can contact Parash B. Lal through a post box in Banjara Hills in Hyderabad, Telangana. India's new IT rules require significant social media intermediaries to appoint a grievance officer, nodal officer, and chief compliance officer. Kanara Bank appoints SK Majumdar as SFO. Kanara Bank has appointed SK Majumdar as its chief financial officer SFO with immediate effect. He will replace V. Ramachandra who is the chief general manager. Majumdar has been associated with the bank since January 2000. He is a chartered accountant and cost accountant by qualification. He has over 21 years of experience in banking in various capacities and departments. Uttar Pradesh Gov rolls out welfare scheme. Uttar Pradesh CM Yogi Adityanath has launched a welfare scheme for those children who have lost either one or both parents due to COVID-19. Under the Uttar Pradesh Mukhyamantri Bal Seva Yojana, the Gov will provide financial assistance to a child's guardian. As a part of the scheme, the state GOV will provide Rs. 4,000 to a child's guardian or caretaker till he or she attains adulthood. Saksham Pension Scholarship in JNK The Jammu and Kashmir Administrative Council has approved the grant of financial relief through the Special Assistance Scheme for COVID Mortalities SASCM, Saksham to the families of COVID victims. Under the new scheme Saksham, the surviving spouse and one eldest surviving member of affected families would receive a special monthly pension of 1,000 rupees through direct bank transfer, DBT. Orissa City launches X-ray on wheels. The Katak District Administration has launched an X-ray on wheels facility to provide radiography services to patients at COVID care centers and to those who are in home isolation. The facility has the capacity to take X-ray pictures of at least 1,000 patients daily. This is an initiative to provide services by portable X-ray machines for early detection of lungs infection. IAU approves Chinese names to moon areas. The International Astronomical Union has approved eight Chinese names to identify regions on the moon. These areas are located in the same place where China's spacecraft Chang'e 5 landed in 2020 to collect samples from the lunar surface. The IAU approved eight names for the moon sites are Mons Hua, Mons Heng, Pei Zhu, Shen Kuo, Liu Hui, Song Yingxing, Statio Tianchu, and Zhu Guangqi. Rajnath Singh launches DGNCC app. Defense Minister Rajnath Singh has launched the Directorate General National Cadet Corps DGNCC mobile training app. The app will be useful to NCC cadets in digital learning and overcoming the difficulties posed by COVID-19 due to restrictions on direct physical interactions. It will also assist in conducting countrywide online training of the NCC cadets. Book on Veer Savarkar by Vikram Sampath Historian Vikram Sampath has come up with the second and concluding volume of the book on the life and works of Veer Savarkar titled, Savarkar, A Contested Legacy, 1924-1966. The second volume will bring to light the life and works of Vinayak Damodar Savarkar from 1924 to 1966, the year he died. The book will be launched on the 26th of July, 21, under the publication of Penguin Random House India. Stargazing, a book by Ravi Shastri. Cricket legend, commentator and one of Team India's most successful coaches, Ravi Shastri has penned a book titled Stargazing, The Players in My Life. In Stargazing, The Players in My Life, he writes about some 60 extraordinary talents he has met from across the world who have inspired him. The book is co-authored by Shastri and Ayaz Memon and is expected to be out in 2021. IIT Ropert develops Ambitag. IIT Ropert has developed a device that records temperature during the transportation of vaccines, body organs and blood. 
Ambitag is a USB shaped device that continuously records temp of its immediate surrounding from minus 40 to plus 80 degrees. The device has been developed by researchers at IIT Roput, Technology Innovation Hub Award, Agri and Water Tech Development Hub, and Startup Scratchnist. TN Go to give cash aid to temple workers. The Tamil Nadu government has announced a cash assistance of 4,000 rupees along with 10 kilograms rice and 15 varieties of dry ration to support temple workers and priests during the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. The move will benefit 14,000 temple workers and priests. Minister of Hindu Religious and Charitable Endowments, HRNCE, Department PK Sekar Babu made the announcement on 31 May 2021. RBI cancels license of SBS Bank. The RBI has cancelled the license of Shivaji Rav Bhosle Sahakari Bank, Pune as the lender does not have adequate capital and earning prospects. Also, the bank does not comply with the certain provisions of the Banking Regulation Act, 1949. As per data submitted by the bank, over 98% of the depositors will receive full amounts of their deposits. Magma Finco appoints Poonavilla as chairman. The Mumbai-based non-banking financial company, Magma Finco Limited on 31 May 2021 appointed Serum Institute of India's CEO Ada Poonavilla as the chairman of the company. Magma Finco also appointed Abhay Bhutada as the managing director. Vijay Deshwal, a seasoned banker with a track record of over two decades, will take charge as CEO at Magma Finco from the first week of July 2021. Navy DY. Chief Vice Admiral M. S. Pawar retires. Deputy Chief of Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Murlid Har Sadashiv. Pawar superannuated after almost four decades of distinguished service on 31 May 2021. He looked after several important operations, including the operations undertaken during the Galwan Valley standoff between India and China. He was awarded Vishisht Seva Medal, Ati Vishisht Seva Medal, and Param Vishisht Seva Medal. WHO names COVID-19 variant first found in India. The World Health Organization, WHO, on 31 May 2021 announced new labels, using Greek alphabets, for various variants of the coronavirus disease. WHO has labeled the variant first identified in India B.1.617.2 as Delta. Another variant that was earlier found in India B.1.617.1 has been labeled as Kappa. China allows three children policy. China has allowed couples to have up to three children after census data showed a steep decline in birth rates. China scrapped its decades-old one-child policy in 2016, replacing it with a two-child limit which has failed to lead to a sustained upsurge in births. The change was approved during a Politburo meeting chaired by President Xi Jinping on 31 May 2021. EPFO allows to avail second COVID-19 advance. EPFO has allowed its members to avail second non-refundable COVID-19 advance to support its subscribers during the second wave of the COVID-19 pandemic. Under this provision, non-refundable withdrawal to the extent of the basic wages and earnest allowances for three months or up to 75% of the amount standing to member, S credit in the EPF account, whichever is less, is provided. DST supported SEF partner with Molecule. Department of Science and Technology Supported Sophisticated Analytical Instrumentation Facility, Punjab University Chandigarh CEF, PAK, has collaborated with Molecule, a USA-based air purifying manufacturer. They will jointly assemble and optimize Molecule S air purifiers in about 10 hospitals. Molecule S core technology is designed to destroy airborne pollutants like viruses in the air. Vinod Kapri's new book 1232 km. Author and filmmaker Vinod Kapri has come up with a new book, 1,232 km, The Long Journey Home. The book chronicles the journey of seven migrant workers from Bihar, who journeyed back home on their bicycles and reached their destination after seven days during lockdown. Kapri accompanied these workers on their 1,232 km journey from Ghaziabad to Saharsa. The book was launched on 31 May 2021. Russia confirms second loan for Belarus. Russia will move ahead with a second $500 million loan to Belarus in June 2021. Russia promised Belarus a $1.5 billion loan in 2020 as part of Moscow's efforts to stabilize its neighbor. 
Minsk received the first installment of $500 million in October 2020. Several Western countries have accused Belarus of piracy. Rajasthan to offer medicinal herbs saplings. The Rajasthan Gov will offer saplings of four medicinal herbs to all the state's families as part of Ghar Ghar Oshadhi Yojana. The mega scheme is targeted to reach out to all 1, 26, 50,000 families residing in the state. They can take home saplings of the four selected medicinal herbs, Tulsi, Ashwagandha, Giloy, and Kalmeg. A fund of 210 crore rupees has been sanctioned for the five-year scheme. Fire in the Mountains bags an award. Filmmaker Ajit Pal Singh's acclaimed movie, Fire in the Mountains, has won the Audience Award for Best Feature at the 19th Indian Film Festival of Los Angeles, IFFLA. The 19th edition showcased 40 films in 17 languages, including movies by 16 women directors. Fire in the Mountains, which is the feature directorial debut of Singh, was screened on the opening night of the festival. Killer Squadron Annual Awards Function The ships of the 22nd Missile Vessel Squadron had their annual awards ceremony on the 28th of May, 21 at the Mumbai Dockyard. Aptly called by the epithet, killers, these swift ships are the, first strike, elements of the Indian Navy. They live by the singular aim and motto of, hit first and hit hard. The Navy Day each year is celebrated on the 4th of December to commemorate the heroic acts of these fighters. Ashok Kumar to officiate bouts in Olympics. India's international wrestling referee Ashok Kumar will be the only Indian who will be officiating bouts during the Tokyo Olympics to be held between July 23rd and August 8, 2021. The United World Wrestling, UWW, the governing body of the sport, has nominated him. His final selection took place during the World Olympic qualifiers in Sofia, Bulgaria in May 2021. U.S. hands over key military base to Afghan. The U.S. handed over a key military base in the capital Kabul to the Afghan forces on 28 May 2021. The new Kabul compound was submitted from the U.S. to Afghan Maud Ministry of Defense in a ceremony. Also, the U.S. had officially handed over five facilities to the Afghan Ministry of Defense with which it has completed up to 25% of the entire retrograde process. He elects T.V. Narendran as new president. Key Confederation of Indian Industry has elected T.V. Narendran, CEO and Managing Director, Tata Steel Ltd., as its new president for 2021-22. He takes over from Uday Kotek, MD and Chief Executive Officer, Kotek Mahindra Bank Ltd. Pawan Munjal, Chairman and CEO, Hero Motocop Ltd., takes over as Key Vice President for 2021-22. Sanjeev Bajaj is now the President-designate of Key for 2021-22. Pandemic Management in School Curriculum Odisha's Council of Ministers has adopted a resolution to include disaster and pandemic management as a part of the curriculum for every high school and college student. According to it, every GOV employee will be trained on the fundamental nature of different kinds of disasters and pandemic management. GOV jobs will have a mandatory syllabus on disaster and pandemic management. Global Day of Parents, the 1st of June. Global Day of Parents is celebrated on June 1st every year. Since the 1980s, the United Nations began focusing on the issues related to the family. A resolution was adopted by the UN General Assembly on September 17, 2012, deciding to proclaim June 1st as the Global Day of Parents. Appreciate all parents throughout the world is the theme of Global Parents Day 2021. The end. Thank you for listening. Please like, share, comment and subscribe.